Hey guys, so it is Sunday afternoon in Hawaii. I have about a trillion things I need to be doing um, right now, but instead, today I'm gonna be answering all of your questions, every single question that's commented all over my TikTok about my Hawaii move. This is a video for you. I'm here to answer all the questions for you guys, kind of guide you along my journey, how I did it, moving to Hawaii as a 22 year old right out of college. So I think we should just get right into it. I'm gonna get my tripod. Let's see. I just feel like I'm just so used to filming like um, vlogs, you know, like a oh, day in my life. So like an actual sit down video like feels kind of weird to me, but let's do it. I have my chair. I feel like I'm getting interviewed for a job. Okay, is my camera crooked? So I think what my plan of action is gonna be to answer all these questions is literally just going through TikTok and looking at the most liked questions that people ask and just kind of going from there. But I think before I get into the TikTok questions, I'm gonna just kind of start off by talking about my journey and how I ended up here and kind of the path that I went with that. So basically, I'm 23 now. I graduated from Ole Miss in May of 2021, so last May. Um, almost a year ago and all through college I was a super big homebody like everyone who knew me knew that I was a homebody I'm from Oxford I went to Ole Miss um, so having my parents in my hometown I was just with my family all the time I literally probably didn't go more than two days max without seeing my parents so when it got to senior year I kind of put off really applying for jobs or thinking about where I was gonna move I said I was gonna start working on it um, Christmas break my sister told me like don't put too much pressure on finding a job just enjoy senior year and then Christmas break into the spring start looking for jobs and that's kind of what I did so Christmas break rolls around and I just was not about it I was not looking for jobs I was just kind of living life and I had this like built up anxiety that just got worse and worse and worse up to graduation about where I was gonna live what I was gonna do I literally would like be driving have to pull over because I like couldn't breathe because it was just really freaking me out so Christmas break go through Christmas break get into January and I say okay January I'm gonna start looking for jobs still just wasn't looking wasn't applying um, and all through college I figured that I would graduate and move to Nashville because that's where my sister was um, my brother was there and is there and it's four hours from home, so it's like far away, but still easy to get to family and see family. So that's kind of the route that I always thought I was gonna take. February rolls around, so it's February of 2021. I had been looking on LinkedIn and online jobs, and a lot of things were remote because of COVID. February of 2020 was my mom's birthday. We took a trip to Nashville. I don't know what it was, but I was just in Nashville, and I had this feeling, like it was almost like a thought in the back of my head saying like, you do not need to be here yet. Like this is not where you're supposed to be. And I remember I left that trip feeling just like so shaken because I was like, this is what I thought I was supposed to do. Now I don't think this is right for me. I don't know what like direction my life is trying to, to take me in. That's kind of where I started to get really, really panicked and I just had no idea. So I really just turned to prayer and I pray about it all the time. And I just said like, God, you know, you already have my path written out for me and you know where I'm supposed to be. Like help guide me in the direction to know what to do because I'm feeling so lost. I'm feeling so anxious. And I feel like if you're a senior um, in college, you probably know the feeling because you get to graduation time and all people ask you is, oh, where are you moving? Where are you moving? What are you doing? Where are you moving? And it's so annoying and it's just so frustrating. It makes it honestly 10 times worse because you're trying to figure out if everyone asking you and you know, whatnot. Get to February, I start praying about it. And for some reason, God just starts putting Hawaii like in my path everywhere. Like I swear, after that weekend trip to Nashville and started to pray about it, like everyone I talked to, it was crazy. Like I would be at church, I'd be at the grocery store, I would be on campus and people would say like, oh yeah, da da da, Hawaii. Like, oh, I just got from Hawaii. Oh, I'm going to Hawaii. I just got back from Oahu. I was in Oahu. Like it's, it was so weird. It was to the point where it was like so obvious. It wasn't just like, you know, random. It was like obvious. Before this, I'd only been to Hawaii one time. It was when I was a sophomore at Ole Miss. But I remember being here and just feeling so happy and so at ease the whole time I was here. And um, I just started telling people like, oh my gosh, I feel like, you know, God is leading me to Hawaii. Like, I feel like I'm gonna graduate and move to Hawaii. And 
everyone thought it was so crazy because going back on being such a homebody, everyone thought like, oh, you're, you're gonna like die. You've never lived without your parents. Like that is so far away. That's like a whole other world, you know? And that's like all I heard at first. Um, everyone was saying it was crazy. And to me it was crazy also. It was just kind of like a little idea that I had. Time goes by. I started talking about it more and more and more, praying about it all the time. Um, it's still everywhere all over my path and I start talking to my parents about it. So now we're going to move into a segment called how to tell your parents that you're going to move very far away to like opposite end of the country. I go to my parents about it and at first they're like no like you're literally no like it's too expensive like you that is insane. They thought it was just crazy so my dad like after a couple times he just said you know what pray about it and if the doors open for you if you're meant to be there the doors going to open for you but like don't force them open like let them open let God open the doors this is the path for you. So one night I was talking about it with Perry who's my best friend and was my roommate pretty much um, all through college. So Perry ends up saying you know if you're if you're really gonna send Hawaii like I will go with you and I was like because that was a game changer to me like going alone was kind of the biggest thing. I do feel like Hawaii is definitely you can definitely go alone but like for me being like such a homebody never living away from home being kind of nervous about it having a friend and a best friend at that say I will go with you that was kind of where it all shifted that's where I decided you know what this is real this is happening, everything's like aligning for me, I just need to send it. So Perry says that she's down to go. And that's when I really start looking into apartments, I'm looking into jobs, I'm watching YouTube videos, I'm watching TikToks, I'm making TikToks, I don't know what's happening, everything's crazy. After a while, we finally found our apartment. Everything just started aligning for us and the doors started opening. And also like back to my parents, so after like weeks of them thinking it was crazy, one day, it was so strange, like one day I came home and um, I found the apartment and I was really like, things were really moving but I felt like I couldn't move forward until I felt like my parents felt good about it and one day I just came home and it was the craziest thing it was like a light had switched with them like I got home my dad was saying you know you know you have to do this like if you don't do this you're always gonna look back on it and think you know what if I would have done that like and it he was just so for it but they were both like you know what you this has been placed on your heart this is where you feel like you need to be you need to follow that. That's kind of the story of how it came to be. I'll go into the logistics of like housing, car, finding an apartment, all that. That's just kind of how it came to be and looking back on it, it is the best decision I've ever made. I'm so happy that I listened to that voice in my head telling me that like I wasn't supposed to be in Nashville and I think back on it like if I would have let the fear of the unknown, the fear of being far away, the fear of not knowing what was going to happen rule my life, I just think that I would have literally missed out on the greatest people and some of the greatest things that have ever happened to me. So now that we've kind of walked through the backstory of what made me move to Hawaii, I'm gonna go into probably the first step that we took, which was finding housing. So for us, um, the first thing that we did when we decided to move to Hawaii was kind of reach out to people that we knew who had lived in Hawaii. We had a really great friend, kind of our mentor, her name's Robin. She talked to us on the phone for like an hour and a half and gave us a lot of really good guidance about moving, um, apartments and everything. But she told us the first thing you need to do is find a place to live because once you find a place to live, you can base your jobs and everything off of that because uh, at the time we didn't think we would have a car for a while, which we ended up not getting a car until September. So we went from July to September without having a car. So obviously like we need to know where we were gonna live before we could start looking for jobs because there was a good chance we were gonna have to walk there or be centrally located. So that reason, um, the car, and really just not knowing a lot about Oahu, honestly, in general, made us decide that we wanted to live in Waikiki area. We wanted to be in town because we knew that if you live in town, there's gonna be jobs in town. So we start looking first on Airbnb, which I feel like is everyone's kind of first move. And that automatically was just like a disaster because Airbnb is so expensive. What you see on the booking, so like if you do like a long-term stay, it'll say like, you know, 3,000 a month. And obviously Perry and I are splitting everything in half, which, you know, looks fine. And then you go to book it and it's like, $800 cleaning fee, $7,000 beach fee, like all this stuff, like $2,900 long-term rental. It's just like so many fees. It ends up being like so much more than it's advertised to be. We weren't really having any luck on Airbnb. The things that were like in our price range were really sketchy and just not really what I want, where I wanted to be. So as you guys can clearly see, that this is a different day and I'm gonna explain to you why. So 
In the next clip after this segment, you'll see that my mom calls me. I ended up talking to her for like an hour and it completely like threw me off of where I was in recording. So I realized that I missed talking about like the biggest, most important part about housing and like how we found this apartment. So as I was going through and editing it today, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to record this information because this is really important. Anyways, about housing. So we realized Airbnb wasn't going to be the move for us because it was super expensive and that's when I started to get really frustrated because I was like, I don't even know where else to begin. Like this is just the only route that seemed doable for me. But I started looking at other websites like VRBO, but that's really confusing because it doesn't really let you pay monthly. And then I was looking at Craigslist, but you never really know about if things are legit, which there are a lot of listings on Craigslist. One thing that I found that we didn't end up using, but I think will be really helpful for some people watching this video is this Facebook group. I'm gonna put it right here. It's um, by a company called Alpaca and they actually have these groups for like every major city. So whether you're moving to Hawaii or not, this is a good resource for you to look up on Facebook. But this was the group that we joined um, on Facebook for Hawaii and there was a ton of people in the group Especially if you're traveling solo, people are always posting like, hey, we are four girls in our 20s looking for a fifth roommate or like we have a room open in our house. If you're traveling solo, this is a great route for you to take if you aren't trying to get like a full apartment or a house for yourself. However, me and Perry knew that we were gonna live together so we were ideally looking for a two bedroom apartment or house. Um, and we just couldn't find anything at the time on that Facebook group. Something to note though about Hawaii housing is that it goes very quick. Like people are always saying, you know, it's May 15th, we're moving out May 30th. So while we did get our apartment in April and we didn't move until July, it ended up just being a weird stroke of luck because the apartment that we're in right now had been rented out for like two years and just weirdly became available on July 2nd. So that was just like a weird chance. But for the most part, housing in Hawaii comes and goes very fast and very last minute. So you'd have to be like really on top of looking and checking um, the websites and the listings and stuff. That Facebook group is a great route for people who are maybe traveling alone or want to meet more friends, want to have roommates ahead of time, you know, whatever you want to do. That is a good resource for sure. I started looking at other websites and I found this website called sublet.com. I'm gonna put like a screenshot of it right here. Looking at sublet.com, nothing on there seemed legit. It's just a really outdated website, but this apartment was on it and it was perfect location. The price was perfect for us. It was exactly what we were looking for, but like I said, the website seemed so sketchy that I didn't wanna like get my hopes up and believe that it was a real listing because you do have to be really careful about scammers when it comes to housing and all that stuff and we weren't going to be able to see it in person we were just gonna have to like go with what we see online and the pictures that are posted under the listing so i start messaging with the landlord of this apartment still being a little bit like hesitant i don't know if it's real or legit or whatever and i start messaging with her she tells me that it's been rented out for two years but it's just becoming available on july 2nd which i thought was like just too good to be true she starts sending over contracts so we had an attorney read through the rental contracts we had an attorney also background check the landlords because we just wanted to be completely sure that this apartment is real so yeah even though sublet.com was really sketchy that's how we found this apartment i can't vouch for like the other apartments on that website but that's just how we did it i think if you talk to 10 different people who live here you will hear 10 different stories about how they found their apartments like some people do craigslist some people do airbnb some people do the facebook group some people do like sketchy websites like sublet.com a lot of apartments and housing in hawaii do require like a six month or a year lease because they obviously like don't want to have to go through finding new people all the time but for some reason we just got really lucky with this apartment and they let us do from originally july to november and then after we because when we first moved here we didn't know exactly how it would go we didn't know if we would like love it hate it like want to leave so our original plan was just say okay we're gonna go till november and we're just gonna feel it out just that way so we didn't commit to like a long-term lease if we didn't know if when we were going to want to leave Hawaii um, but after being here for like a month and this started to feel more and more like home we were meeting friends we ended up messaging our landlord I think in like August or September and told her that we were going to want to extend our lease um, from November to the end of May. Love it. There's a bunch of ways you can find housing and that's just kind of how we did it and I'm pretty sure this next clip is going to be when my mom calls me which threw me off from my original housing clip but so since my mom has called me in the middle of my video and 
I've had to take a pause. We're gonna get her in on this video. So everyone welcome Christy to the YouTube video. Mom, yes. what were your what was your reaction when I told you that I wanted to move to Hawaii? Like your first reaction? What advice would you give to someone who like is going to tell their parents that information? The timing is everything. So pick a time that they're not exhausted, too busy. Really, timing is everything. Yeah. Especially, do not do it after work. Yeah. Do it. And go in with a plan. Go in with go a, in with a plan. plan. If you live in our house, you better have a plan and know what you're doing have some things already decided upon yeah and then what advice would you give to your to other parents that when if their child wants to move really far away uh, well your prayer life will definitely increase a lot but just i think going back to you know realize that you were that age one time and i think you you want the best for your kids and there's only one chance and one opportunity when you're not married to travel and so go explore there's a big world out there so and you know what you'll get to go on an amazing trip to visit them <laughs> oh that was good mom okay that was like an hour long hiatus of talking to my mom on the phone so now i'm back um hope you guys enjoyed her little cameo so now i'm gonna answer probably the most asked highly requested most asked most wonder question which is how do you do this financially and what do you do for work so that is literally common in all of our tiktoks people are always commenting like you know what how do you do this like what's your job you know daddy's money trust fund like the, all these crazy things and it's just funny because to us it's like not that crazy after living here and just realizing like really how much we spend and how normal it is. I feel like people think you have to be like a trillion billionaire to move out here, but like we're 23, we were 22, we just graduated from college, we definitely weren't like big balling with the money. This is kind of, was kind of our plan of action. So we knew our rent was gonna be 1350 a month and then that was kind of the most of our expenses. And so after that we had like, you know, groceries, um, we don't pay utilities, we knew that we have rent, groceries, um, some money for like activities, but the thing about Hawaii is that most of the activities that we do are free. And I feel like that's where people get kind of confused because they say, oh, it's so expensive to live there. But aside from just like our rent and food, everything else we do on the daily is normally free. You know, we go to the beach, we hike, um, we hang out with friends, and that's all free. So going into the move, Harry and I both, I would say, saved up probably around two months worth of expenses because we knew we didn't have jobs going into moving here. And from what I had heard, everyone was saying like, oh, everyone's hiring. It was after COVID, everyone was needing people to work. So I wasn't ever super concerned, but I definitely put about two months of expenses and rent to the side just in case it did take me a little bit longer to get a job. So I would recommend to most people who are trying to move to Hawaii or really anywhere in general, save up two to three months rent because you don't know like what will happen when you get there, um, how long it'll take you to get employment and all that stuff. So the next part of that that I'm gonna answer is what do I do for work? So I have multiple streams of income and I would recommend honestly to anyone in this earth to always have multiple streams of income because it's the best way to not have to always be dependent on one thing. So going into Hawaii, I had been doing content creating, social media, influencing, whatever, um, all through college basically. So I did that a good bit. And then I got kind of more serious about that in January of 2021 because I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with my life. And I just thought to myself like this would be a good time to start learning about you know how I can make money online. I can definitely do a video talking more about that. My streams of income would be social media content creation is probably my number one stream. And then I have my jewelry business, which is Exo Sarkar that I brought out here with me. So my second stream. And then um, my third stream would be the part-time job that I got on the island. So I moved here. We all started, you know, interviewing. We looked at Craigslist. Like Craigslist was how I found my job. It's so weird because like in a normal world, you would just look on LinkedIn. 
um, and stuff. But like in Hawaii, everything's on Craigslist, which is like just kind of crazy. Even apartments and stuff, like Craigslist is actually like kind of the move. I started looking on Craigslist. I knew that I wanted to work a job that paid tips because living in Hawaii, like an hourly, is just not gonna do it for you, for most people um, and for like our expenses that we had to pay. So I know I want a job with hourly and then also a job with tips. So one day I got on Craigslist and I I do a couple places and actually like had gotten hired but not for the positions I wanted. And I just kind of thought to myself like, is this crazy? Like I'm not gonna accept these jobs. Like I, I kind of need a job. Just kept praying about it that the right job would come along and it did. I got on Craigslist one random morning and it was like a very sketchy ad. It said like barista needed. At the time I didn't drink coffee. I didn't know anything about coffee. I never worked in like a hospitality service industry type of job, um, but I ended up applying anyways. And I went into the interview and I walked in, it was like the cutest cafe and like immediately I knew like this, the vibe of the coffee shop was like a place that I would want to spend my time. It was just so cute, very aesthetic, seemed like a very happy, like positive energy place to be. I applied to the coffee shop, went into my interview, literally told the guy interviewing me, I said, I don't have any experience. I've never worked a job like this in my life, but like I'm a people person and I can learn really fast. And so they ended up hiring me and I worked three to four days a week at the coffee shop, um, which was in Waikiki. So it was like a six minute walk from my house. It was great for the time that we didn't have a car because I could just walk to work. And I would work like 6 a.m. to noon which was super great because that gave me like the whole day to do things in Hawaii or um, noon to six or seven. I actually just had my last day last week because I'm taking the last month um, while I'm in Hawaii to just like enjoy being here. But that job was such a good job for me because I made great money, great tips. It was in a hotel. Um, everyone I worked with was so great and friendly and I felt like I had my own little kind of family unit there. All the money I really made from tips and from working there I just put all my tip money towards rent and then the rest of it was just kind of money to do fun stuff with. Yeah, it was a great job for me. Another way that like God totally provided was just putting me in the perfect place. Um, it was a coffee shop cafe so like I would eat honestly most of my meals there. I would eat at least one meal there every time I worked and then I got like free coffee every day so that honestly probably saved me a lot of money while being here. So shout out to Hawaiian Aroma Cafe. I love that place. It's so good and also so cute. You guys should go if you're ever going to Hawaii. Anyway, so that's my job. And I feel like some of the comments that I've seen on social media, people have said, okay, well like, yeah, but I'm not an influencer. I don't work in social media. Like I can't do this. Like, you know, I'm gonna be working a regular job. Not, I don't have these streams of income. And while I think it's important to always have multiple streams of income just in life, my roommate, Grace, just now started getting into influencing and content creation and she's amazing. But like when she first got out here, she wasn't doing influencing as a mainstream of income and she was working just a normal job. She worked at a dive shop um, in Waikiki and she loved it and she made all that she needed to live here and pay rent. And we fully fund all of our life in Hawaii. And I think that's something that people like can't grasp because we get comments all the time, like who's funding this Hawaiian vacation, you know, sugar daddy. And it's so crazy because like we are 23 years old, fully funding our life here. Our parents support us emotionally, but after we graduated, both of our families are on the same page. Like, you know, you graduated now, you're an adult now. You have to pay for your stuff now. And that's kind of how my family was and how Perry's family was. It's honestly not as hard as people think it is. Like, it's crazy. Like, all of our friends out here work just very normal jobs. You know, they're waitresses. They work at, you know, hotels. They work at everywhere. And they're all living out here on their own. Most of them are all fully financially independent. And we're all making it work. So, something that I think that some people might have an issue with is thinking that you need to graduate and work a real you know real nine to five job and I personally just think in my opinion that I would rather work you know a fun little job here and there and experience like this year of life that I've gotten to live here I don't think I would have wanted to come out here and work a nine to five job because I think I would have missed out on like a lot of the activities and the adventuring that we do and I just loved how flexible my schedule was at the coffee shop. They literally let me go home for like two months for Thanksgiving and Christmas and like we're totally cool with it. They're like, yeah, come back whenever. And yeah, that's kind of it. Like that's how I afford to live in Hawaii. It's nothing crazy. Just I work and I work hard and I know how much I need to make every month and here's that. Okay. I feel like I'm just talking, talking, talking. 
This is so much harder than blogging my days, honestly. Ah, okay. So, now that we've covered, you know, our apartment and the job aspect, I think something else that people wonder about a lot, which is a little bit less asked, but still I think very important, would be how we got a car in Hawaii. And I think for some reason, this was like one of my biggest concerns when we decided to move was like, what are we gonna do about cars? Because Harry and I and Nicole, who came with us as well, we all have cars at home. However, we're 4,000 miles away in the middle of the ocean. To ship a car from Mississippi is like really expensive. A lot of our friends who are from like California, Utah area, they've shipped cars out because it's a little bit cheaper, it's closer, but like to ship a car straight up from Mississippi to Hawaii is like so expensive and then eventually you have to ship it back and we knew we weren't going to be here for a super 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 long time where it'd be worth it so yeah that wasn't really anything that we ever considered something that i learned about before getting out here was the word island beater i had never heard of that when someone said oh yeah everyone just has island beaters i was like what in the hell is an island beater but basically an island beater car is just a car that has been like you know passed around, people are always moving, they're always coming and going, there's so many military people on the island, so they'll buy a car, drive it, sell it for really cheap, someone else will drive it, they'll sell it, like, cars are always being sold here. However, you have to be very careful because people are also always getting scammed here with cars, and that is what kind of almost happened to us, so we got out here, started talking to people and learning how they did it, and a lot of people said, oh, I got my car on Facebook Marketplace, or I got mine at like a used car lot, and all this stuff, and um, so we started looking on Facebook Marketplace, and the first car we were looking into was fake. It like never existed. It was a fake listing. It was a scam to like basically get us to like send them money, and then the second car we looked at, like seriously, I went to test drive it. I actually knew the guy. He was like a mutual friend, went to test drive it and he was literally trying to scam me like he was like trying to get me to bimbo him a thousand dollars and like put my name on the title before i got the car and like it was just like really shady i would take a friend with you because some things that were shady about that i didn't pick up on and then a friend of mine was like hey like this is weird and then i was like wait yeah this is weird like this is this is not legit after the second car ended up being a scam we kind of thought to ourselves like this is this is just useless like this is maybe a sign that we don't need to be buying a car right now um in hawaii we just need to like wait to see because this is obviously not working in our favor right now and it was actually amazing because the friend that i took with me to see that car ended up a couple weeks later sending me his friend's post that his friend was renting out his car because he was leaving the island and to us we just thought oh this is great like we don't know how long we're going to be here for we can just rent this car every month and we don't have to buy it we don't have to go through like you know titles and all this stuff so we ended up renting a car from our friend Itlo from like september until we left in november and then we got the car back in january and then in february we actually started renting another car of our friend shane who's actually our neighbor so we got his parking spot um, which was better for us because we had to also rent a parking spot and we were renting that first car because our building was like under construction didn't have a spot like it was kind of weird long story short we ended up renting a car we've rented a car the whole time we've been here we've never purchased one and we paid i think for the first car we paid like 200 or no we paid like 400 a month so like 200 each because perry and i split the cars in the grand scheme of things like with the amount of money we paid to rent we probably could have bought like a car but it probably wouldn't have been a super nice car and with the island beaters you have to be really careful to not buy a car that's like in bad condition because then you're going to end up putting so much money into it to fix it that you might as well have just bought like a nicer car people will sell their cars here for like two two thousand three thousand up to like six seven thousand for like nicer cars it's crazy like cars are sold so cheap here because a lot of people especially people in the military are just like having to leave the island quickly and they have to just like you know get rid of their cars we went from july to september without having a car and we were honestly perfectly fine we lived in town there's a beach literally two minutes away in waikiki and then we had a lot of friends who were already here and had cars and they drove us all over the island which we are always going to be very grateful for but yeah renting a car is how we went with that we covered cars now we're going to talk about how we made friends that is another question that we get all the time people come in perry <laughs> um obviously i moved here with perry she's my best friend and then our two best friends claire and nicole also came with us um claire was only here until august she had to go back to school but me perry and nicole 
we're all out here. We were all from Ole Miss. We were best friends in college. We were in the same friend group in the same sorority. That did make it a lot easier for me personally because I knew like even if we didn't meet people right away, I had three people with me that I like love so much, so it'll be okay. But we obviously had like a huge, amazing friend group in Hawaii, and we had people ask us all the time, like, how did you meet these people? And you know, honestly, like we just got super lucky. Like there's just not nothing else to really say about that other than getting just super lucky with how we met them. Basically, I had known this girl on TikTok named Blaine for like the months leading up to the move and I would just watch her videos all the time and she reminded me a lot of myself and I thought oh this girl you know she was in a sorority she graduated she moved to Hawaii like this is what I'm doing and it was so crazy because the day that I moved to Hawaii I made a TikTok like I'm moving to Hawaii today and coincidentally all of Blaine's friends had just left the island they had like gone home and like all this stuff for summer and one of Blaine's sorority sisters from UCF tagged her in my TikTok and said you guys should be friends and literally, the day that we moved here, she, Blaine, this girl I'd followed for like months, messaged me on Instagram and was like, I'm Blaine, I live in Hawaii, um, I'm going to a party tonight, you guys should come, I saw that you're moving here, whatever. So like, literally our first full day of being in Hawaii, Blaine messaged me on Instagram, we went to the party, which, another thing about moving here with friends, it was a lot easier to roll up to this party with me and three other girls than it would have been to like maybe go alone. I do think that Hawaii is a very solo travel friendly place. I think that something that I love about the people out here and something that I felt like that first night I went to the party and I had no, we didn't know anyone like something that I just felt from everyone is that everyone who's here knows what it's like to to be new like they know what it's like to move somewhere super far away like none of us are close to our families. It's a very inclusive like welcoming warm environment so yeah we got really lucky with the way and how quickly that we met everyone and we like went to that party with blaine that night and like instantly met like all of our best friends and like loved them all so much but also like there are so many ways to meet people on this island especially because you know you're at the beach and you might be at the beach alone you see another person who's at the beach who like looks like kind of your vibe and you say oh hey like do you live here or like you're on a hike and you run into people who are your age and you kind of start talking when i started working my job i was meeting people all the time and i would recognize like kind of girls and guys who were like regulars at the cafe and i would say oh like do you guys live here and they would invite me to like go do yoga and everyone is just so inviting and so inclusive and like that's something that i loved about it and like kind of just like the overall vibe of people out here i do feel like hawaii is an easy place to meet people you know my main recommendation is always just like put yourself out there go talk to people like reach out to people on social media like go through tiktok dm people on instagram like it's just our world is so social with through social media that it's kind of an easy place to connect and yeah find people that way but that was just kind of our journey and how we found the friend group that we have now. Okay, I'm reading through all of my DMs to make sure that I have like touched on the most asked questions. Like I'm not even kidding. I get probably 10 to 15 DMs a day. And like if I have a TikTok that pops off, like so many a day of people just saying like these like long messages and they're so like awesome, but like I just don't have the time to reply to every single one of them individually and like I want to be able to give someone the time to give them like really good in-depth information and like I just don't have the time to do that with everyone so I hope this video will reach all of those people and hopefully answer like all the questions that I get because I like wish I could guide every single person on their move and like all of their questions but it's just like it gets so much. Oh my gosh this one that I just read it's not even a question it's just so sweet. I honestly feel like I would have I wouldn't have had the guts and comments to do all this if, if I wouldn't have seen everything that you've done. You look so incredibly happy which inspired me okay so i feel like i've touched on the majority of questions that i get asked like the very most i know there's always like little questions here and there so i guess if you guys have any other ones you want me to go like more in depth on or maybe try to answer to you can put them in the comments um i can try to like go through those and kind of answer them more specifically but i feel like there's like the major like four or five that i get i guess the last little part would just be everyone's wondering about our new move and why we are leaving hawaii everyone keeps messaging us like you guys love hawaii so much why are you moving like i don't want the hawaii content to be over um and we do like we love hawaii so much it is incredible i think that this island has given us like all the best things that it could give us but a lot of our leases were coming to an end perry and i only had our lease through the end of may so we are leaving on may 31st and um the five of us who are moving together we just wanted to be able to travel a little bit more um being in hawaii you are pretty landlocked um 
to the island like you can go to other islands but it is hard to kind of travel um, and we just wanted to do something different and see more of the world and it just felt like we had kind of like served our purpose here and we were excited to move on to a new adventure things started falling into place with that and i'm really excited to be able to tell you guys about that very soon yeah we are leaving at the end of may may 30th flying back to mississippi for about a month and a half and then july 10th we are going to be starting our new move and our new adventure and i'm really excited and i'm just like honestly super grateful that i'm gonna have like such a core group of people that i love here going there with me because this move is going to be a little bit bigger than our hawaii move and i think having like that core friend group is just going to make like all the difference in the world and just be so amazing for us but thank you guys so much for watching this video thank you for caring about my journey and i hope this is a way to be able to teach you and guide you a little bit i feel like a lot of the things I talked about in this video, you can apply a lot of different moves. Um, and the most important thing is just to be confident in your decision, trust your gut, like you will end up exactly where you need to be. And definitely don't let fear of the unknown, fear of what might happen, the opinions of other people stop you from, from living your dreams. Nothing is unachievable if you set your mind to it. All of your paths are already so well planned out for you and thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope this answered a lot of the questions that people ask and I'm so excited to see you guys in the next one.